sensing this danger. This is the greatest showman. He is floating on air now. He's going to send it back. Hello, I'm Harbi Singh and welcome to the AFL and the AFLW Multicultural and Diversity Footy Panel. Our panelists today are Rajbir Kuman and George Gracios with Fawad Andrews making his usual cameo appearance from Adelaide. Hi all. Hi Harbir. Hi everybody. Hi. Round 7 in the AFLW got away at a flying start last Friday evening from Icon Park as Carlton surprised with a 27 point win over St Kilda. While Richmond away in the West won by a handy 19 points in defeating the West Coast Eagles. On Saturday, the Gold Coast defeated Sydney at home by 34 points and the Adelaide Crows rolled over Fremantle by 18 points. In the evening games, Brisbane, which travelled to Melbourne, took the owners away from North Melbourne by a narrow 7 points and Hawthorne on home turf got away from Port Adelaide by 13 points. Good footy prevailed on Sunday as the Geelong Cats beat the Essendon Bombers by 15 points. Melbourne killed off the Bulldogs by 64 points and Collingwood thoroughly beat the GWS Giants who were never in the hunt, giving the Magpies victory by 32 points and a spot in the top four. With three weeks of the season to go, there are at 11 sides in contention to possibly make the final. So it's going to be a very tight for the next couple of weeks. What are your thoughts, uh, Rajveer? Oh, yes, um, Harbir, um, with the round seven just finished, finished, we had yet another exciting round of, you know, AFLW season seven and three more to go. We will be seeing lots of close games. Um, talking about the Saints versus Carlton game on Friday night with Carlton winning this one uh, by 27 points, they moved closer to the to top eight, uh, sitting at, you know, number 10 at the moment. Uh, Carlton's defense really stood up and, you know, uh, they slowed down uh, the St. Kilda in inside 50s and that made a huge difference to the Carlton to uh, to their game and with Del Poss uh, the one favorite moment of my mind was um, you know Del Poss when she snapped quickly with, with three players St Kilda players around her she snapped the go uh, ball quickly and uh, kicked at the goal near the goal squ square so that was a brilliant effort by Del Poss. Well we're saying that's the goal of the year certainly the goal of the round. Agree yeah. Yeah, to that one yeah. yeah. Although I think it was uh, a bit more expected um, of St Kilda after um, the way they played against the Pies last week, though. They couldn't buy a goal. They were goalless for three quarters. Daniel Harford made the inspired move at half time of putting Darcy Vecchio, sorry, Vecchio uh, across the half back line. She was struggling up forward. It's been a terribly disappointing season for her up forward. She's been a renowned goal kicker over the last few years, but this season just hasn't had her kicking boots on. But Daniel Harford switched her to half back and she was an absolute wall in that defensive half and it was a great defensive performance by by the Blues, the Saints disappointing, yes. fifth loss in a row. So, Yeah, and uh, Richmond, I think if, if, as far as Richmond is concerned, I think they nearly lost it. I think West Coast did it very well in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's right. But with the six goals and seven behinds, they defeated uh, West Coast Eagles by 19 points uh, and they they moved to uh, position sixth from eighth and keeping their finals hope alive for sure. And they did it when they were on the road. Mm. And the Eagles, like you said, they, you know, brought the uh, margin to one goal with four minutes remaining in the final quarter. But uh, some brilliant footy we saw from Grace Eagles and she, her last two goals, they uh, it gave them a very um, you know, easy win to the Tigers. So, yeah. yeah, well, the Tigers are about to appear in the finals for the first time in their, their short history, which is a great effort for them. And um, they've notched up five wins in a row, so great momentum for them. And they're going to go into the finals with a lot of confidence and some teams will have to be careful of yeah. the Tigers. Yeah. Yeah. And no yeah, luck for Sydney, right. though. Swans and Gold Coast, yes, um, another loss for Swans and uh, uh, Gold Coast, a uh, huge credit to Gold Coast Suns. They ha they uh, defeated Swans by 34 points and they are also keeping their final hope alive um, with this win. Uh, Swans' pressure was not really bad. They laid 61 tackles, so uh, we have to appreciate Swans for that, um, you know, effort. It was the Suns who, you know, came out very clean and quick. 
quick uh, out of the stoppages, which made Swans to chase them, you know, around the ground. Just brilliant effort from Gold Coast Suns, mm -hmm. the way they played this one. The Swans will, will, will be relieved that they actually kicked a couple of goals. We know that in the last few weeks they've had some performances where they haven't been able to register a score, so relief there. But Gold Coast kicking seven of the last eight goals, imposing their their authority over that match. Great performance overall by the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then North Melbourne versus Lions. Um, Lions had another win um, in this round, defeating North uh, Melbourne by seven points. Though it was not really a piece of cake for Brisbane Lions, they really have to uh, had to fight for this one. Kangaroos created heaps of opportunities actually for in for themselves inside 50s, but it was Lions' defence. Um, you know, they could not really convert them into the you know goals. Uh, they could not put much on the scoreboard. So I think that that was brilliant effort by um, Lions. It was just inaccurate kicking by uh, by the Roos. They'd be very, very disappointed with that. They were very well into the game, uh, controlled parts of, of the game, but just couldn't get the job done up forward and the Lions. Yeah. Uh, their coach Craig Starsevich after the match conceded that it was a terribly disappointing performance overall. They have a lot of improving. Mm. And to his credit, he, he acknowledged that the opposition probably deserved to win. Yeah, That's definitely. right. And Ruby Swarks, the, the beautiful moment I liked about this game, the Ruby Swarks goal. Uh, you know, she literally ran in quarter two from half back to the half forward and then ended up kicking a goal and gave Lions a three point That's lead. It was a good goal. And, and Hawks, um, they, they are on uh, some sort of mid season momentum at the moment. Oh, oh yes, the thir third win for Hawks uh, in this season, and they are not very far from the top eight. Um, we'll see how they go, you know, in the next round. Uh, uh, amazing efforts by Hawks. Their captain Tilly uh, Lucas Rod played her 50th in style Great with effort, 19 yeah, disposals, yeah. yeah, and one goal. Well, Erin Phillips again didn't have her kicking mm -hmm. boots on. Yes. She's only kicked a five behinds for the season. I guess you'd call her given, a high-priced... Given one of the best athletes of uh, Australia. Um, Absolutely, but just couldn't score. And the the power only kicking one goal ten, which is a terribly disappointing performance. Bad kicking is bad football. Definitely. Erin Phillips need to uh, lift up her game. And uh, we'll be back with more of the AFLW and forwards Adelaide Report when we return shortly. Welcome back to the Multiculture AFLW Footy Show. One particular side from South Australia is already focusing on the big prize. The AFLW Adelaide Crows are almost unstoppable. I will bring Fawad into the conversation to tell us all about the Adelaide ladies and other news west of the Victorian border. Welcome back, Fawad. Hello, guys, and good to be with you. What a great couple of weeks we had. Uh, of course, the start of the... Uh, uh, AFL trades for 2022. Uh, the two South Australian teams did very well, uh, especially, of course, uh, in the in the last uh, uh, few days. Uh, Adelaide, uh, Adelaide, Port Adelaide scored uh, a big coup by getting uh, their two men, Rioli from uh, the West and also Rio Junior, that is, and also they got um, Jason Horn uh, from. Um, North Melbourne, North Melbourne tried their best to uh, keep him. They even flew their uh, uh, his family in the last game uh, to watch him, but that didn't work either. So congratulations to Port Adelaide on getting two superstars of the game, and that should uh, see uh, Port Adelaide lift for uh, season 2023. Uh, their rival, uh, Adelaide Crows, also did very well by getting their man which is Isaac Rankin. Uh, he wanted to come back to Adelaide and he, um, uh, you know, the Adelaide Crows offered him a great deal, although uh, the Suns uh, offered him a $650,000 um, uh, season for three years, uh, but the Adelaide Crows uh, bettered that by offering him 800000 uh, a season for a minimum of four years. So, of course, they are officially, uh, Rankin is officially Adelaide Crows uh, um, and Rioli 
and uh, uh, horns are adjacent horns are officially Port Adelaide, but Port Adelaide is pursuing again, uh, um, this time from Geelong, they're trying to get Ritagolia, and, uh, but uh, just a little bit hard at the moment because um, uh, Geelong is not giving in. Uh, they want better picks uh, for uh, Ritagolia. Let's go to the Adelaide Crows uh, girls. Uh, they started uh, their game against uh, Freo very, very slow by not scoring in the first uh, quarter, uh, but also they kept um, Freo scoreless in the last quarter and they went ahead to win by 49 uh, points to 31. So they were winners by 18 points. Um, we couldn't say the same uh, about Port Adelaide. They had a, a bad day. Uh, they lost to Hawthorne uh, by 13 uh, points. Uh, but what a game that was. They scored, uh, Port Adelaide scored one goal in the first um, quarter, and that was it for the whole game. Uh, they managed to... Uh, 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 to you know, they managed to not score uh, from 10 attempts at the goal. So uh, their um, goal-kicking were uh, disastrous. And uh, they ended up uh, scoring uh, 110 and they lost uh, by 13 points. Uh, so Horson 29 and uh, Port Adelaide 16. Uh, what a weekend that was. And um, let's uh, also remember that the Adelaide Crows won six games in a row and they're looking favourite uh, to uh, stage another grand final. Uh, that was all from me uh, tonight, and I will see you again soon. Well, that was the game which went down to the wire. Um, thank you, Fawad. We hope to catch you soon. Concluding our football inquest from last week, we missed out on a sister duel. We did, Habib. It was supposed to be the Presparcus Cup, but Georgia missing out because of a suspension. Maddie, who tried as hard as she could to get the Dons over the line, wasn't enough. The Cats just too strong all over the field. Chloe Shear kicking three goals was best on ground and she kicked two goals in the last quarter to seal the match. But this was a great clash. The Cats looking to keep in touch with the top four. Rajbia. That's right. And it wasn't really a piece of cake for Geelong Cats. Uh, like you said, um, Bombers tried really well, especially with the stats on the ground. They were everywhere. Maddie Prispakis covered almost all the ground and we could see her in the game. And uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, Amy McDonald, Cats star player, she got one match suspension for laying a tackle. Um, so, which which did really well, uh, who did really well, um, you know, in this game with 26 disposal and 12 tackles. One of them was really tough, so she wouldn't be able to play the next one. So she's paid the penalty for an overzealous tackle. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, now Essendon's been doing fantastic with the possession of the ball, but haven't been able to convert it fully. Um, and Melbourne, um, they gave a lesson uh, to Bulldogs um, until the first quarter. It was a bit close, but then just uh, Melbourne took over. With massive 64 points win, yes, they, I think they are looking at a double chance um, and will be in the top four. Um, it was, I would say, one-sided game since the first bounce. Uh, they actually controlled the footy throughout the game and didn't really uh, give any chance to Bulldogs. We didn't see the contestant footy, you know, Bulldogs play, you know, with the likes of Kirsty Lamb. So that was missing in this game and they are moving away from the top eight uh, Bulldogs. Uh, not sure if they will be, yeah, you know. Uh, well, the demon sending a statement to the rest of the competition that they're going to be a premiership threat. They've safely ensconced in the top four, breathing down the neck of the Brisbane Lions, and that was a, a great effort. Taylor Harris again dominating up forward. Absolutely. She can actually have um, a con contestant mark with one hand, which and would, would make it look like a regular mark, <laughs> which... Yeah. yeah, and Pies, uh, they, they, they're flying high at the moment too. Uh, they had a very good game against GWS, which hasn't been performing that bad. Yeah, that's right. They kept the Giants goalless uh, for the first three quarters uh, and a brilliant uh, footy by Collingwood. And they are also looking, you know, um, in the top four for a double chance. Um, and they, they, I think they also have a very well-balanced uh, team with their, their strong midfield and the forward line. They were very wasteful too. So they have to work on that forward conversion because if they don't, 
they will pay the penalty in the finals. Finals are all about taking your opportunity, so that's one area of their game they do need to improve on. Yeah, definitely spot on. Before we go into this week's game previews, I have seen some big names putting themselves up for a try. And it's been quite amazing this year, and just one such trade is the acquisition of Black Acres from Fremantle to the Blues. In fact, it's the steal of the century, paying him just over 300k a year for his three-year contract. On the other hand, Collywood has given away a star player in Grundy, this time to the Demons in another trilore moment. The Magpies depart with paying Melbourne 400,000 a year to supplement Grundy's salary. George, these deals are close to ridiculous. The whole trade week is turning into a farce. What do you think? You're absolutely right, Habib. There have been some really complicated deals involving salary dumping, get, obtaining drafts for next year. It's just a terrible meat market, I find. It's, it's a shame on the game. It detracts from the game, but... It's the time of the year where players get their wishes to return home. We've seen, for example, uh, Luke Jackson returning home to Frio, Izzy Rankin leaving the Gold Coast Suns after they did so much to develop and harness his talent. He's going back to Adelaide, so that's a great get for them. Another example, Jason Horn Francis leaving North Melbourne. He's returning to Port Adelaide. Touching on Blake Akers, he was being paid $180,000. It's really none of our business, of course, what the players are getting paid. But Carlton coming in with a better offer. And I don't blame him for one. He can make the move and earn some better, a better income and secure his future. Yeah, and definitely GWS after failing on a couple of uh, tries, I think they're trying to get a Jago Mira um, after um, attending a wedding party or so. So a lot of things are happening at the moment. Uh, very interesting trade period. Well, GWS have come out of this quite well, I think, Habir. They've secured North Melbourne's number one pick, which they're hoping to use for Aaron Cadman, who's supposed to be a Jeremy Cameron Mark II. They suffered when Cameron left to go to the Cats. He made the Cats stronger, so they're hoping by getting Aaron Cadman it fuels that particular void. So I think GWS have come out of this draft really, really well. North Melbourne, I think their supporters will be terribly disappointed to see Paul and Francis go. North Melbourne securing picks number two and three. Is that a good deal? It remains to be seen. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. Uh, we will continue with our preview discussion for this week and our tips right after this break. So stay tuned. This week commences the last three rounds of the AFLW before the finals. And while some sides know, they will be up there fighting for the premiership. There are also half a dozen hopeful sides in the competition that will be gunning for a chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best ones in the final eight. Realistically, Rajvi, three games uh, to the finals. The ladder is definitely a little bit log-jammed. Who is going to make it uh, for the last two positions? You are absolutely right, Harbir. It's, it's really jam-packed uh, in the top eight. And uh, it's, it's also the Pride Week um, EFL has announced uh, in EFLW Season 7, starting with Carlton Richmond clash on uh, Friday night. Um, I think it's going to be a close matchup between the two, uh, but Tigers uh, probably will keep up their momentum um, in the game. And uh, um, I think they will have a good win um, over Carlton. Well, the Blues are one game outside the top eight. It's a must win for them. They can't afford to drop a game. But I would expect Richmond to be too strong. Their form in recent weeks has been terrific. They're, they've won the last five games, so they're on a roll. And Brisbane uh, Lions versus Adelaide Crows, the top two contenders of uh, this season, um, would be, again, a very close contested match. Uh, I think um, we'll be going in the Brisbane favours. Uh, we know that uh, th they have a very well-balanced team and uh, their key forwards with the likes of Jess Wardlaw, he, who is also leading, I think, the goal um, uh, stat uh, for this season. So uh, they, they move the ball really neatly from you know, their back line to the forwards so, and they also um, make a very great defence line um, for their team. So Brisbane probably is going for this one. They'd need to improve on their performance. Last week's effort against North Melbourne was, was tricky, but I'm tipping Melbourne to comfortably beat them. 
Yeah, um, that, that's possible. I believe so, uh, but North Melbourne is also, you know, uh, doing very well. They have a great uh, team um, in this season, though they are not able to, you know, keep up with the, the, the other top contenders. I probably would go for North Melbourne in this one. And uh, Geelong Cats, West Coast Eagles. Um, Geelong, Georgie Prispakis would be back. Um, yes, a welcome return, but they're good enough without her anyway. They were, but they lost, they, they will not have Amy McDonald. Um, in round eight. So we'll see how that goes uh, uh, for the Cats. Uh, West Coast Eagles um, were not bad in the last round, uh, but it's, uh, Geelong Cats probably will have their home ground advantage as well. I agree. Yep, they're a good side. And Ascendant Sydney, the two new clubs from the ex expansion side, um, will probably go in ascendant favours because they are still good with the percentage, though they are they lost last three matches um, with the likes of Maddie Prispakis, who, you know, alone can cover the whole ground. Um, ascendant looking, is looking really strong against Swans, even though they can lay some good tackles. Uh, but I think ascendant will come up really strong in this one. As we've seen, Swans are yet to win a game, so another loss headed their way. Possibly, yes, that's right. And uh, moving on to the next one, we have Gold Coast Suns versus Melbourne. Um, one sided affair, it's, it is going to be in Demons' favour, I believe. Um, Demons, uh, again, one of the top four contenders, probably looking for a double chance. Um, you know, they are at uh, top three at this uh, stage. So I think by beating uh, Gold Coast Suns, they will be looking um, at double chance in the finals. Gold Coast Suns, I think. Yeah, even if it right. will, yes. even if um, demons will be on the road, it will be in favor of uh, Melbourne. Yeah, GWS Giants like they they might put up a show because they know what's online, but it will not go in their favor though. Indeed. Um, and moving on to the next one, we have Western Bulldogs versus Saint Kilda. Uh, Western Bulldogs is not really having a good one against the you know the last in the last few matches which were in against the top contenders, Adelaide Crows, Brisbane Lions, and Geelong Cats. Now, so they are also on the line. They probably want to have this one to keep their finals hope alive. If they could play their contested footy, they have a good chance against St Kilda. And the G GWS Giants and Hawthorne um, could be a close one. Hawthorne might keep their momentum, but GWS Giants might have their home ground advantage in this one. Hawks with a mathematical chance of making the eight, but We'll see. Yeah, that's right. And the last one we have is Fremantle versus Collingwood. Collingwood probably will uh, be easy one for them, though Fremantle can have the pressure and, you know, especially inside 50s. But I, I think Collingwood with the likes of uh, Steph Kiochi, their forward line is strong as well. That brings to my tips for round eight. And I'm going with Richmond, Brisbane Lions, North Melbourne, Geelong Cats, Ascendon, Melbourne, Western Bulldogs, GWS Giants, and Fremantle. Thank you, Rajbir. Uh, on Friday night at 6.30 p.m., we are bringing you the Carlton vs. Richmond AFLW match broadcast in the Italian language from Icon Park with Angela Khan and Daniel De Lorenzis. And on Saturday, a doubleheader with the early game Essendon vs. Sydney Swans in the Punjabi language from 3.10 p.m. with Rajbir Koman and myself. And the late afternoon game from 5.40 p.m., the Geelong Cats and the West Coast Eagles in Spanish with Vanessa Gatica and Damien Medley. All these broadcasts will be available from the AFL Match Day app this weekend. Well, that's all we have for you this week. You can also watch us on Adelaide TV Channel 44, Friday 6.30 p.m., on Aurora Foxtel at 1 p.m. Saturday, and on the NEMBC YouTube AFL you are listening to this podcast on the Community Radio Network and the AFL Diversity News in eight languages can be heard during the AFL home and away season on NEMBC member Diversity Radio stations throughout Australia. I'm Harbi Singh and from our panelists Rajbi, George and Fawad in Adelaide, good night and our panel will be back with you next week with more of the AFLW and the AFL trade action. Music